All right, guys, uh, we're going to go into unit uh, section 1.3, uh, which is going to be about uh, two different formulas that we're going to learn, um, the midpoint formula and the distance formula. So as you can see, we have two big ideas, two big takeaways that we want to have from this unit. The first being um, knowing how to find the midpoint. And then secondly, knowing how to find distance. And then uh, I'm gonna talk about why it's nice to know these formulas. Um, so wh where will midpoint formula be helpful for us? And then uh, secondly, where will the distance formula be helpful for us as well, okay? So I'm gonna come travel back and forth between pages, but first we're going to start with an example. So if I were to give you x, y, and notice by my symbols, it's not a line, but it's a segment. So if I were to give you segment x, y, um, and they're connected from one comma two to one comma negative four. So if I were to just connect those two points like that. And if I were to ask you to locate the midpoint of that guy, um, suppose I, I suppose many of us would notice that from here all the way down that it is six units total right so if it's six units then we know that the middle right the middle point has to be right here right? it has to be three units away and so by 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 eyeballing it and then just by locating it you know we can figure out the solution for the midpoint which is one comma negative one okay and the way that i found that um so this is our x this is our y and so the first number is always our our x number and then the second number is always the y number so this is one and then I went down one, so negative one. So the answer here would be one comma negative one. Okay. So what if we're given a situation like the second option here, where it says find the midpoint of AB, segment AB. And so notice once again, here's my X, here's my Y. So the way I got one comma three for A was I went over one, and then I went up three. One, two, three, right? And then I got to my point. And the six comma negative two, the same deal. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. So right six down two. And then if I connect these two points with a line, then I can kind of eyeball it and guess that my midpoint would be maybe right here. Right, but all that is is a guess in this case, right? So the question is, how do we find the midpoint, right? We'll get easy examples like the first one where we can just kind of eyeball it and count. But what about examples like this where we don't know how to do it? Well, um, what you can do now is, is to write down this process here. So to find the midpoint, right? I want you to just pay, pay attention to um, that term midpoint. So midpoint, kind of sounds like middle point, doesn't it? So to find the middle point between two guys, another word that you might have learned in the past is this word average. So to find the average of the two points, okay? And that's going to be the process by which we find the point. So what is the average, right? What is the average? So for example, if I were to take a test and I got a 75, an 82, a 100, and then a 54 on four, four tests. And I wanted to find what my average score was. Then wouldn't that be um, telling us what, our kind of, what the middle score is, right? So I'm not exactly, by my test scores, I'm not exactly a 100% test taker, but I'm not a 54% test taker either but I think I'm somewhere in the middle between the 75, 82, 154. And so the way that I do that is I add up all the terms. So 75 
plus 82, plus 100, plus 54. And then I divide by the number of terms I have, the number of tests that I've taken. So I've taken four tests. And so by that, the average of this would be um, 75 plus 82, 157, 257, uh, what, 311. So 311 divided by 4. I hope I did that right. Let's see, 154, 236. Yep, 311. Mm -hmm. And then divide that by 4. And then 4 goes into 31 seven times. Right, so 311, oops, 311 divided by 4. So 4 goes into 31 seven times, 28. 31, 7 times 28, and then that continues to repeat, so I know that my average is 77.7, okay? So how do I find the middle? Well, I, t I take up all my terms, I add them together, and then I divide by how many there are. So to find the average of two points, right, we're going to use a very simi similar formula for the midpoint, except our answer has to be a point so we're gonna have a parentheses with something comma something right and so we're gonna take our X's we're gonna add them up x1 plus x2 now if you're wondering what this little one stand for and what the little two stand for this just means my first point and then this one just means my second point right so if I say x3 y3 then I'll be seeing my third point. Okay? And by first point, it's just whatever's first. So, for example, for AB, right, this guy would be X1, Y1, and then this guy would be X2, Y2. Okay? So anyways, to find the average, I add my X's, and I divide by the number of terms. So how many X's do I have? I have two. Then I take my y's, I add them together, and then I divide by how many I have, which is two. Okay, and that'll lead me to my answer. So to the, midpoint, the midpoint formula to backtrack, so the big idea here is that we can take our two points, and if we just average them together, they will give us the midpoint. So before we go on to distance, let's go ahead and do it with this problem right here. So in the example that I have for AB, well, you know what, we'll start with, actually, let's start with XY. So using my formula, I can say that the midpoint would be one plus one, because this is X1 and this is X2 divided by 2, because there's two terms, and then I can do that with my y1 and my y2. So 2 plus negative 4, all divided by 2. And then this becomes 2 divided by 2, and then 2 minus 4 divided by 2. So this becomes 1, negative 2 over 1, and so my midpoint is 1 comma negative 2. Okay. Uh, do I have a typo here? Hold on. One comma two. Oh, I'm sorry. Negative two divided by two. So this should be negative one. <laughs> okay. So there's our midpoint. So you see how they're the same? So the same deal for this guy. So one comma three and six comma negative two. So let's take our first x, 1, add that to 6, divide it by 2, and then take our first y, so 3, add that to negative 2, divide it by 2, so 7 over 2, 1 over 2, and so look at that. So the midpoint is a not pretty number. In other words, 7 divided by 2 would be like 3.5, 0 0.5, for 1 half. And, and check it out. So 1, 2, 3, and then 3.5, and then 
and, and the one half point five lead us to our midpoint right there. And so I actually guessed pretty good. I guessed pretty well. So the midpoint would be three point five comma zero point five. All right. Okay. So why is this helpful for us? Because the midpoint first. First of all, it tells us the middle. Point tells us the middle point, right? So right here, that's helpful. And then the second reason why this is helpful for us is because it cuts our segment in half. Okay, and so the way that we show that is by putting a couple of marks like that right so in other words each part is congruent so that's helpful for us okay all right so that is our midpoint formula let's go ahead and move on to the distance formula so for midpoint we found the middle point so we needed an x we needed a y well, for now, what we're going to do is we're going to find the distance. When we think of distance, uh, we want to think of the term how far. How far. So if I ask you how far is it from here to, I don't know, how far is it from here to Canada, right? We would give a number as our answer. We would not give a point, right? We would say, oh, Canada is, uh, you know, 2,000 miles away or whatever. Okay? So if I ask you, and this is the same example, how far is it from 1, 2 to 1, negative 4, right? We might look at that and go, okay, I can just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So just by looking, I would say the distance is equal to six units because we don't have any uh, other uh, uh, labels, okay? So six units. But life is not always that simple, right? Um, if we were to find the distance of AB, so from here to here, It's not quite as easy to count because we don't really know what exactly we're counting and everything's going kind of diagonal, right? But when things are going left to right, um, we can, it, e it's easy just to count, okay? So to find the distance formula, uh, to find the distance between two points, we can use something called the Pythagorean theorem. And so what is a Pythagorean theorem? And I don't know if you remember from previous classes, but the idea being that if you have a right triangle, right, something like this. Oops. So if you have a right triangle, And if you know how far this is, and if you know how far this is, then you can find that diagonal, right? The hypotenuse there. And so doesn't C look a lot like AB, right? Because AB is going diagonally across the grid. And those we can't count as well um, as we can the ones that are going up and down like A or the ones that are going left and right, like B. So the Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And so this gives us a way to actually find C, right? So if I were to just re rewrite that C squared equals A squared plus B squared, to find C, to figure out how far it is from one point to another, we can take the square root of A squared plus b squared. 
And the way that I did that was I wanted to get rid of this little squared symbol. And to get rid of a squared, you do the opposite um, equation, uh, the, op the opposite operation, I'm sorry. And uh, which would be to take the square root, to take the square root, and that would take us here. All right. So let's take it over to our example problem here, and then we'll come up with a formula at the end. And let's go ahead and draw straight down and straight across. And notice that, that by doing that, I've drawn myself a right triangle like that. And then to figure out how far it is, I can just count. So one, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five as well. And so based off of these guys, if I let this guy be A and if I let this guy be B, then I can easily find C because A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then earlier we showed that C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. And so C is equal to five squared plus five squared, 25 plus 25. square root of 50, uh, which can be broken up into um, square root of 25 times the square root of 2, which is equal to 5 square root of 2. So that answer right there, the distance, this right here is equal to 5 square root of 2. And then if you type that into a calculator, that'll give you a, a nice decimal, okay? All right, so what exactly is the distance formula? Well, um, so how did, I get, how did I get five from here to here? So if this is six comma negative two, and if this is one comma negative two, then the way I find the distance is by subtracting the six and the one. So six minus one equals five.